Hello everybody, Prince of the Bear here. We're back at the Caribbean Beach Resort because it's time to return. To Sebastian's Bistro. We're gonna go eat under the sea. We'll see what they got for us now. In celebration of the new live action Little Mermaid because we are both stupid hyped for that movie. If you're not, I feel sorry for you. Let's go eat. Sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. Exactly what you would expect from a Caribbean Mai Tai. It's consistent. Since we haven't been doing food reviews, Sebastian's since like 2018, we've gotten the Mai Tai, and it's always been the same. Four and a half out of five Mai Tai. It makes you want to go, yar. Let's have our princess of the Mai Tais. Princess of the Mai Tai. Or I can call them a uh, juicy gut rot. <laughs> she continues to buy these things. We can even try them. My poor stomach. Mmm. Oh, these are quite well balanced. Strong enough. But enough flavor, so, um, let me hate myself later. Not bad. Three and a half out of five plus. So for the first time ever here at Sebastian Beach, I decided to try the Make Your Own Rum Old Fashioned. So I got the Barton Court 15 year aged rum. I got a black walnut bitters and a maple syrup. There is no rhyme or reason to why I chose any of those things. I have never had Barton Court rum, especially not 15 year age. I have never had black walnut bitters. I've had maple syrup and some things, but will those things go together? I have absolutely no idea. I'm using my own liver as a guinea pig. Smells good. Smells very sweet. Sweeter than Topolino's maple of that. That's whiskey though. No, oh, I think you like it. The black walnut is like a bitter, bitter, but like a earthy taste that goes well with the maple. And the rum is nice and smooth. Maybe rum old fashions are the way. Four out of five points. So here we have the breads of the breads. It kind of looks like your gluten-free bread. I thought it was like a, a special bread, but it smells like the gluten-free bread. But the guava butter is the reason why we're here. Guava butter. You didn't get to catch me scooping it, but that's okay. I will show you me spreading it. Look how good that looks. Beautiful. Here's your gluten-free roll, it's super undercooked. Probably one of the worst ones that I've ever had. The bread itself, I'm gonna give like one out of five. Guava butter is always good. And then there's also this jam that I'm gonna put on here. And then really I'm not gonna eat any more of the bread because I think I'm gonna get sick. Mm. Caramelized onion is amazing. I'm gonna keep the sauces for the side so I'm gonna put them on other things, but as it is, the sauces are incredible. Jam is a five out of five as well. Guava butter and jam, onions, whichever you wanna call it. Those are one of the top tier things here. So no matter what we do, we cannot escape gluten free slash vegan rolls. They are always a mixed bag. So we have the guava spread. So it is actually plant-based. Uh, equal to the uh, guava butter, if I remember correctly. I'm just gonna slather it on. Hopefully, mm. it can save these rolls. Yeah. It cannot. I now know. Whenever this channel, this channel tanks, 
and I just want to do funny content, I guess I could just treat these rolls like cardboard and just spread whatever on them to see if it tastes good. It's not taste good. That is a one out of five clocks. That's almost an edible. <sighs> one thing about getting food that you don't like is having to get it again, knowing you don't like it. Let's try the onion jam. Onion flavored cardboard. Also a one of the five blocks. Not great. So now we have the, I believe they're coconut rolls. They're nice and buttery and soft. And we're gonna do exactly what we did the princess. Now this is actual lava butter, so we're gonna take a little bit because I wanna make it for this meal. A nice little spread. Now that is how it rolls taste. You almost don't even need the lava butter. It's so good. Three and a half out of five stars. Now with the onion jam. I kind of feel like the onion jam is superior. Four out of five stars. Now, for the community, because we like to try all the things, I'll do both. A little guava butter, a little onion jam, a little roll roll up. And better than some of the parts, solid four overall out of five points. Here we have your vegan salad. I'm just gonna grab me some lettuce pieces with some of this tangerine, I guess. There we go. I'm just gonna fork as much of it as I can in this one bite. Like an extra challenge to pork your food. I feel like the salad was better the last time that we came here. I'm not a huge fan of the dressing this time, or maybe it's the way that like everything just puts together. It's just kind of like meh. I don't really like the, the seasoning. I'm gonna give it like a two and a half out of five salads. It doesn't talk to my salad at all. Go ahead and dive in here in the middle. We're gonna get some of the greens and the purples. We're gonna get some of the mandarin oranges, I'm assuming, tangerines. And I want some of the seeds. Give me all of the seeds. Because you should do, be able to do anything for our plant race, brethren, sister and they and them and then, it should be a decent salad. I like the texture of the pumpkin cheese of the lettuce. I made it orange. It's so strong. Overpowered everything else. I'd suggest cutting smaller pieces. Take like a whole slice. It's not terrible. I give it three out of five blocks. Here we have the omnivore version of that same salad. It's got like a sort of like a, I think it's like a honey granola on here, so this isn't vegan. It is vegetarian though. Go ahead and dive in here. Get some of the crunchies. Look at this big nut pile right here. It's basically, that, that's the main difference between the salads. I think maybe the dressing. Oh wait, I forgot an orange. Eh. I need little tongies like this at home. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but I want them. So let's try to build us a bite. It's like prom, but more awkward. My date didn't stand me up this time. Sort of a bundle of seeds, it's very sweet, but then sort of balances out, that sort of tartness of the orange. 
this one I like a lot better than the plant-based version. It's uh, very tempting to eat all of that and then not have room for anything else. That is not the strategy we go here for. It's all you care to enjoy family style. Save room for the good stuff, the better stuff. Four to five. So here's one of the enhancements you can order with your main entree. This is the fish and crab cakes. And they do also have a pop or a uh, butterfly shrimp that I've had before. And they also have a seafood, sort of like a cooked ceviche, but it had mango in it, so I couldn't get that. So here we are. Uh, we're just gonna try everything together. Take a little bit of this crab and fish. It's not just a crab cake, it's crab and fish. A little bit of sauce, a little bit of slaw. A lot of bit of the slaw. The sauce is more like a sweeter ramelon sort of like style. And that's the flavor you're gonna get, it's aioli. But it comes to like a ramelon, like tangy flavors, it's slightly sweet. It does well to sort of like cut through the uh, oceany, the ichi, as we say, of the fish. But if you don't like something that tastes of the ocean, like that flavor, you might want to avoid it. The slaw is good and crunchy, it's a nice mix. I feel enhanced. Three and a half out of five pounds. Here we go with the Beyond Bratwurst. Now this is basically what we had at Woody's the other day, but without like the good barbecue sauce. So it's just gonna be, I guess, steamed because it doesn't look very, it doesn't look fried or anything like that. It looks very plain and sad-ish. Cheers. one out of five Beyonds. That is one of the worst Beyond sauces I've ever had in my life. Point five. More points down. I really feel like Beyond Sausage is the new We Can Make You Pasta. This is really that unimaginative at this point. If you're not doing anything special with Beyond Sausage, you might as well just not do it at all. We're glad to have an option for the plant-based people. But sometimes, you just gotta aim a little bit bigger, darling. It tastes both freezer burn and undercooked. We're in a proper restaurant, I have to spit that out. That's a zero. That's a flat zero. I'm trying to redeem myself with this impossible sausage. It used to be on a, a stick before. But now it's just sausage. Clearly seasoned inside, which is nice. You can see all the little thingies. It's got like a little char on the outside. It's always better when the Impossible is seasoned really good, like cat bulb style meat. I'm here for it. That's a four out of five. It's way better than the Beyond that they're offering here. Way better. Now this used to be one of the most unique, impossible sort of creations on property. Obviously, things have changed a lot since then. You have the Impossible Rib Chop at Woody's Lunch, or not Woody's. Woody's Lunch Facts. Roundup Rodeo. I don't know why I keep wanting to call it Woody's Roundup Rodeo. It's just Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. It should be Woody. Who's Jesse? Maybe it should be Jesse's Rodeo Roundup. Either way. Uh, well, we've, seen, we've seen a lot of things change since then. We've seen Impossible Short Rib. We've seen Impossible Lumpia. Uh, this is still unique, but I miss the stick. The stick was, was something from special. Flavors of the Caribbean, the impossible meat. Definitely does not taste more the same. 
even without the stick. It's a minor agreement. They're still extremely tasty. Just tastes as I remember it. It's a four and a half out of five claws. That's a plant-based one not to miss. Next we have this tofu stick that is like one fourth of the size of the tofu that we had the last time we came here. Hopefully it's as seasoned, well seasoned as it was the last time we came because like this is one of my favorite things the last time. It's weird because it has like a little bit of a kick to it, but it also kind of tastes like a churro. So it's like sweet and spicy, and I don't know how to feel about it. But it's also tasty, and I'm probably gonna order seconds of this because the flavors are, they're just confusing. Like it's very well flavored, but the flavors are just confusing. Yeah. It's like, is it an entree? Is it dessert? The world will never know. It's just bomb. That's what it is. Four and a half out of five tofus. I would like to eat tofu like this more in my life. I really thought this was like a tofu fish stick. It does not smell like fish. The breading looks very well seasoned. Tofu looks well cooked. Is it wrong? I'm kind of afraid of this one. I try a lot of plant-based food in this channel. Probably more than most omnivores. It's not often I'm scared of something. There's some kind of sauce on there, or the remnants of the sauce. It does not taste right. Maybe it's the sauce and the carrots? But something about that tastes Unexpected. It's definitely like a mashup of like the savory, salty, and the sweet, and in this case, it just doesn't work. I like the consistency of the tofu and the bread. I just feel like maybe the flavor is gonna mix up with something else on the plate. As it is, though, I'm giving it a three out of five. Lastly, we have these beautifully new vegan crab cakes. They're nice and like choppy chops. So they look a little dry. Definitely not as good as the island cakes from uh, Sci-Fi. Well, let's see how it tastes. So it's jackfruit based. It's not hearts of palm based. And it's not like um, blackened season, so it's not as ishi. It's very like, it doesn't taste like fish at all. It's probably one of the least like fishy tasting vegan options that I've ever had at Disney. It's more just like a sweet cake. And nothing like a crab cake. If I'm gonna call, is it a crab cake? I'm gonna say hell no. On crab kitten standards, it's a one out of five. But on like taste bud standards, it's like a three and a half out of five out of five. Three and a half out of five out of five? What the hell am I saying? It's okay. It's not something I'm gonna run here for, but it's okay. I'm kind of anxious to see how Bear feels about this crab cake, considering that he is a bear and a fish connoisseur. So the plant-based slash vegan fish game is still like one of those like ever evolving genre. It's still trying to find its footing. Sometimes it steps in mud, sometimes it steps in a bed of flowers. Let's see what this one is. Here's the thing. If you had sold this to me as like a tropical, a tropical jackfruit Caribbean patty, like a meat patty, you're getting Caribbean or a meat pie. Completely sold. Maybe like a four out of five. As a crab patty? Crab lift patty? Nah fam, that's not it. And no hints of like being anything close to the sea. Now is it taste good? Yes. Do I think that you should immediately book Sebastian Beach or something just for that? Because it's the newest thing in the menu? 
no. I still think the Master Bistro is underrated, and that people should definitely come here, especially if you're vegan, plant-based, vegetarian, because the spread is immaculate. I'm gonna say immaculate, better than most, but it definitely still needs some work. I'm giving the patty overall a two to have a five problem. I'm gonna split the difference. But it could have been a contender. Butter has changed the last time you were here, but they added a fourth protein. You still only get three, you just get the pork, the steak, and the chicken, which is more than enough and they were okay, but now you also get a steamed cod with this sort of uh, sauce on it. Now, normally there would be mango on top of the pork. Obviously, we're having allergic mango, and there's no mango on this plate whatsoever. But since the cod does get cold the fastest, we're just gonna go ahead and dig in. Tilt this so you can see it's nice and flaky. Fork cuts right through it. It's a pretty looking fish for cod. Cod fish in that right hook. Mmm. It's like nice and herby. Herby. Like soaked up the seasonings. So like even though white fish doesn't really have a lot of flavor on its own, that goes down like herbs served on a white platter. Amazingly, it works. I'm giving it three and a half out of five claws. So here we have the flank steak. It is cooked to your temperature. Uh, I got, obviously, the, the chef regular, the medium rare. I'm not, as always, I'm not a huge steak person, but I'm always interested in trying something. Maybe one day, one of these things will actually turn me into a steak person. Probably not. Go ahead and dive in here. I could eat the whole thing in one bite, but I don't want to do that. I am a bear of culture. Not really, but I like to say that I am. Perfectly cooked. Looks nice and juicy. Some grill marks on there. Mmm. Okay. The meat's nice and tender. Seasoned. And it also soaks up the bed of like the cucumber relish it's sitting on top of. You get a unique like cucumber flavor with the meat. It actually works kind of well. Steak flavor can be like an overly, sa overly savory for me sometimes. It's just like too much. This is a nice balance. Is it going to turn me into a steak connoisseur? No. But it's not bad. Three and a half out of five points. We have the slow roasted mojo pork, nice and shredded. Looking delicious. This thing would literally tear with a fork. It's that slow roasted. Now like I said, normally does come top with mango. I kind of has the mango. So we're just gonna have the plain mojo work by itself. Let's see uh, if it's really got the mojo. Mm. Mojo's unique blend of like lime, citrus, with the savoriness of pork, it's a perfect balance. It's juicy, it's flavorful. The cook is perfect. We're getting like all the flavors of both the seasoning and then the pork on its own. And I'm here for that. I mean, that's all four out of five claws. Who needs mango? Last up, we have the chicken. Everybody sleeps on the chicken. There's one resort, Walt Disney property, that knows how to handle their chicken. I'd say it's Caribbean Beach. Delicious jerk seasoning flavor. Look at that skin. It's like chicken skin candy. Look at all, look at all that seasoning on there. And the seasoning in the chicken. We like all around seasoning. You can't just season the outside. You can tell, biting into all these proteins, that they're all of the same family. The flavors are so complimentary, but unique. So everything on this plate tastes differently, but everything has its own unique like taste and feel without feeling like it's just more of the same. And I'm really not gonna go wrong with any of these proteins. I'm with the chicken, 3.75 out of five. Super tasty, skin is delicious, literally the best part, but I think the pork wins the plate.
This is a serving spoon, but I'm just going to use it to eat these red beans and cilantro rice because it sounds like a good life choice. Cheers to eating improperly. Oh yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's almost as good as the jasmine rice that I had at Tusker House. A bear and I are gonna be fighting over this rice. That's a five out of five. That's a princess city's item. You need that rice in your life. Like, stop. We're just coming here and need all the food because the food here is amazing. Dig in the cilantro rice. So I've tried to make cilantro rice at home and felt miserable. It never comes out looking like this. Uh, if I did, the princess might respect my cooking more. Definitely got the color. It's got the beans. It's cilantro rice and beans. That's peak. There's a mountaintop, and there's those foods look down upon said mountaintop. That is cilantro rice. <laughs> five out of five. Plus. Next stop on our side tour is this beautiful vegetable cur I think it's a curry. It looks nice. It's like a tomato, um, pepper, like red pepper based sauce. Like the red pepper is pretty prominent. It's like a one and a half out of ten on the heat scale. But just enough pepper to give you like a flavor, like a roasted pepper, which I like. I'm gonna give it a three and a half, maybe no, 3.75 out of five vegetables. Use some good roasted vegetables. And I really like the sauce that they're in, like it's kind of like a pasta sauce, but better. Remember kids, always eat your veggies. And then use it as leverage as for double dessert. Sorry, parents. Like a tomato base with a little bit of spice. It's not like um, Italian tomato. It doesn't just taste of the Caribbean. And the spice, I'd say, is like a two out of ten on the spice scale. Very mild. Put on the mouth. It was flavored very well. It's a worthy side. Ooh, three and a half out of five plus. So we have some delicious broccolini. I'm just gonna eat a little bit of this toppings. Toppings, a bag. Toppings, 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 a broccolini. Mm. Oh yeah, charred perfectly. Like we just went to Fort Wilderness and put that out on a grill, like hoopty level, like perfect char. Perfect flavor. That is what broccoli should taste like. That is a 4.75 out of 5 broccoli. This is good. Definitely worth it, but obviously you're not going to come here just for broccoli. Like, it's just good side. I'm just going to go ahead and claim this broccoli for all of their kind. It's on my plate now. It belongs to me. Nice and grill level smoky. Tender, but still got the crunch to it. I've had some bad examples of broccoli from time to time. This is not one of those. Three and a half out of five plus. The caramel actually melted the uh, ice cream on this one, but I think that even with all of that, that this uh, pineapple coconut cake is better than anything they offer for dessert, dessert at Ohana. Let's see. There's a lot of whole pineapple pieces in it. So if you like pineapple, you're gonna love it. If you like coconut, it's not super coconutty, but it's okay. For me, 
I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take it any more bites because it's too pineapple-y for me, but if you like pineapple, you're gonna love this dessert. For the pineapple lovers, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. For the pineapple haters like me, I'm gonna give it a one and a half out of five. This is a bear dessert. 100 percent I feel like anything with any time of sauce on it. That's a bread pudding or bread style. Is always trying to compete with the toddler toast and Cone Cafe. So that's the pinnacle. I don't know if I always agree with that, but I feel like when it comes to breads with sauce, that's the pinnacle. Kona still takes the cake. I don't make these rules. I don't even know if I agree. Tonga toast? Who talks about Ohana's bread pudding? Just saying. This beast, this monstrosity. The plant-based ice cream and the caramel sauce and the breads with the pineapples. That is an assault. An assault. A pineapple. They're going on like big, thick pieces of coconut, like as thick as hash browns. Cool. You must love coming to this dish. I am not on board. Two out of five points. So here we have the plant-based version of basically the exact same dessert. The only difference is basically the ice cream. So non-plant-based. Non-plant-based. Omnivore friendly, vegetarian friendly. Do the pork. Conservative poor. Probably the only conservative part of my life. Either way, a little corner of the cream. Get a lot of bit of the bread. And we're gonna pray for me. I just can't. Coconuts is thick as sliced carrot. Too much coconut. This dessert lacks balance. It's like the Hulk of desserts but after he smashed up your entire town. Two out of five blocks, equal rating. <laughs> Fashion Bistro, still, I think a little underrated. They did a little bit of a minor menu change, but I don't think it's enough to like change your opinion whether or not you want to come here. Either you're gonna come here or you're not gonna come here. I still think if you haven't it. been here, you should come here these ones. It's probably one of the better all you care to enjoy. And if you have to choose between like a cheaper one with like Boma versus Sebastian's Bistro, Ooh. I kind of feel like you Ooh. need to do both. Because That's like a hard one. they're both inexpensive. Like Sebastian's Bistro is cheaper than Boma, but like the options are both a uh, variety and delicious. So like if you want like a, a variety vacation with lots of different meal options and choices and not to be like crazy character dining expensive. Boma, Sebastian's Bistro. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't know what you guys think. Where's Sebastian Bistro versus Boma ranked for you? Let us know in the comments below. If there's any other all you care to enjoy, I think we're getting through most of them already. Would you like to see us do? Comments is always in the place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this and we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Mermaid. Let me see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. And oh, oh, oh. You heard the sea witch.